Hey there all you good people, I'm Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. Today we're going to take a look at a really nifty trick, a way to convert the RGB output of your Apple IIgs to work on any VGA monitor. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. The Apple II GS is unique in the Apple II family in that it has a high resolution graphics chip on it and uh, has a high quality RGB output to uh, complement the uh, those graphics. Um, Apple created, along with the Apple II GS, an RGB monitor specifically designed for the machine to allow you to see those graphics in, you know, all of their 4096 color glory. That's great. But the downside to that is that uh, these things are 30 years old now, and CRT monitors, as we all know, do not age well. The flybacks die, capacitors fail, all different types of wacky things can happen. So if we want to preserve these old computers, we need to be able to get the video out of these, uh, you know, and their high resolution capability into some other format. Uh, sure, you can uh, just plug in a regular TV to these guys, but you know, TVs are, you know, going by the wayside too. And uh, the uh, televisions, the NTSC capable composite televisions, don't have the same resolution as the original RGB monitor does. So you don't really see, uh, you, you don't really see all the uh, the goodness that they, that can happen there. So we have to find some way to get this RGB output into a format we can use. Um, the most compatible, easiest way to do that would probably be VGA, and that's what our solutions these days. Uh, uh, you know, go around um, either VGA or uh, raw RGB. Now, there's a couple different ways we can do this. One is to use a SCART capable monitor um, and a special adapter cable. That when you do that, you don't need any weird converter boards or anything like that. You can basically just create your adapter cable, output the raw RGB straight into the SCART monitor, and it works just fine. That's all cool. However, here in the U.S., SCART isn't quite as popular. It's harder to find. So us, you know, us, uh, us Americans, as we call ourselves, have to find some other solution generally to make that work. What's ubiquitous around here in the U.S. is VGA. VGA is everywhere, and it's mostly RGB. It's pretty much the same. Uh, but the problem with VGA is that its refresh rate is different. Uh, VGA ten tends to have, uh, you know, uh, horizontal refreshes around 30 kilohertz, whereas the RGB on this one is 15. So we need something that can basically interpret and double that uh, that uh, that that output. Um, what we use to do that is a little scalar board. Now these scalar boards are popular in the uh, arcade scene for arcade cabinets. They're used to um, convert the video output uh, coming out of an arcade cabinet into a modern monitor uh, so that you know you can preserve those arcades. Well it'll work just fine in this case too so what, why don't we do that? Now since we're going to be using that scalar board we have to figure out a way to connect the scalar to uh, to uh, the Apple II GS and to the monitor. The monitor side is easy, you just plug it in. But on the Apple II GS side, these scalar boards have funky inputs. So we have to create some sort of adapter to make that work. Now there's a couple different ways we can do that. Um, you can get a standard 15 pin to VGA co uh, adapter connector that's used on Max and connected to this. But the problem with that is that our horizontal sync, which is what we need to actually sync up the video to, sh to show it, um, isn't, in, isn't on the right pin on the Apple II GS, it's in a weird spot. So in order to make that work, uh, we have to actually take this, uh, take the Apple II GS apart and solder a little trace or connect a little wire on the bottom of the motherboard in order to get that signal to the right spot. I personally don't like that because we're, then we're modifying our Apple II GS and that's just that something seems wrong about that. Uh, the other way to handle this would be to create a special cable. Um, basically, just getting a couple of ends, a regular uh, DB15 and then an HDB15, you know, the VGA connector on the other side, and just wiring up, wiring up so that the pins are in the right spots. And if you do it that way, then you don't have to modify your Apple IIgs, and that's the way we're going to opt for today. So now uh, that we've talked about that and we we know what's going on. Uh, we're going to show you the process. I'm going to, right here on the bench, I'm going to build this, uh, build this cable out, show you how that works, and then hook it all up, and uh, show you how, how, how well this uh, solution works uh, to get, uh, 
video out to your VG monitor. Let's check it out. Here's the tools and materials you need to uh, make this project work. First we need a soldering iron. Um, we will need some solder. Uh, I've got some really, really old stuff I've been using for a bajillion years, but uh, the thinner stuff, the uh, .01 works a little bit better. See, I'm using an 050 there. Uh, helping hands, uh, the little alligator clips on those uh, help hold on to some of the bits and pieces as you're doing the work, which makes it easier for you. Uh, sponge, wet sponge, uh, to help you clean off the soldering iron. Uh, if you have, uh, have this all together in a, uh, like a soldering station, that's even better. You know, more power to you. But for this little project, a simple little off the shelf thing will work just fine. Uh, we will need some wire strippers that can uh, do 22 to 24 gauge wire. As you can see, mine can do that there. And uh, it also has a uh, space in there that you can, you can use to uh, strip the uh, sheathing off the outside of larger cables. Uh, we'll need uh, simple screwdrivers. Uh, uh, the uh, Phillips and flathead work just fine. I've got a small little jewelers-like set or a precision set there that works fine for me. And a uh, final tool you'll need here is you will need a uh, copy of the pinouts for the VGA end and the RGP or the RGB end for the Apple II GS. Um, I have a copy of this on my website in color, not in black and white like it is here, uh, so you can see where you need to put all your cables. Uh, as far as materials go, uh, bits and pieces to make this work, we've got the, uh, uh, the uh, VGA end connector there uh, and the connector end that goes on the Apple II GS side and a couple of project hoods to put all that together to do, for strain relief and to make it look pretty. Uh, the cable we want to use for this, in my opinion, is going to be a Category 5 uh, stranded cable. It's got eight conductors, which is the exact number of conductors we need for the project. Uh, they're mostly colored correctly, which uh, makes, it, makes it a little bit easier. And stranded cable is the best, as you can see the cable in there is stranded. Uh, that works best for two reasons, in my opinion. One, because this cable is more flexible. Uh, it, it works better, you know, when you're working with it on the back of the computer and you're moving stuff stuff around. You don't have this, uh, this big stiff cable stuck on there like you would with the solid cable. Uh, secondly, the stranded cable absorbs, uh, absorbs solder better when you're, when you're wicking that on there to put all that together. So uh, in my opinion, go with the stranded there. Best place to find this is a cheap little patch cable. Patch cables tend to use stranded cable because they need to be a little more flexible. Now we get on to the magic. Uh, this is the scalar board. This is a GonBez GBS8220 uh, scalar board. You can also use the GBS8200. They'll both do the same job. And uh, all of the silicon magic in here takes your, your RGB signal out of your Apple II GS, converts it, and uh, sends out a VGA signal here that's compatible with any VGA uh, monitor. Uh, and then you need a power adapter for that. Uh, the power adapter you need is going to be a 5 volt, uh, 2 amp or better. I use a 2.5 amp in there because the 2.5 amp uh, works better with this card or with this with this device. Uh, two, 2 amps, uh, 2 amp adapters tend to cause the card to do weird things for some reason. So 2.5 or up and you're golden. And last but not least, of course, we need an Apple II GS and a VGA monitor because we're trying to connect that to that. Without any of that, what's the point, right? So now we're going to uh, take a look at the process of putting all these bits and pieces together into a, an adapter cable solution to make that work. All right, now step one is going to be to get your soldering iron plugged in and heated up. Um, my cheap little thing here heats up pretty fast. Some of these take a long time to heat up, so just do that first so that's hot by the time you're uh, ready to use it. The next step after that is going to be to take your cable and uh, cut, your, uh, cut your sheath off of it to get the wires exposed, then strip the individual wires. As far as how much you should, uh, you should remove of the sheath here, um, I would say that you're going to want to do, oh, I don't know, I've done way too much here. You're probably going to want to do maybe a quarter to a third of an inch. You really don't need a lot in the, uh, a lot of that stripped off, uh, mainly because you want to be able to, uh, uh, you want this short enough so that when you put this in the hood, there's the, this area right here gets crimped by the strain relief so that, you know, you can't pull that, pull that out of the end. Uh, after you do that, then you're going to want to strip the individual wires here, uh, all eight of them, 
And as far as how much you need stripped off, you need, oh gosh, an eighth of an inch. You do not need a lot of that stripped off of there. Um, that's pretty easy. Uh, you know, if you got the right tool, basically, you just uh, take that, stick that in there, uh, stick that in the right channel, and strip it off, and there you go. It's all removed. So you do that for all of those ends until all of those are clear. All right, now we got all our cable ends uh, stripped there. Um, the next step is to tin your leads. Uh, so what you do to do that is you take each of these little wires and you twist them a little bit so they kind of stick together. And then uh, you uh, take a little bit of solder and you put, uh, you melt it and you stick it in there. And what it does is this, uh, this uh, cable will act as a wick, especially because it's, it's stranded. It sucks it up in there, bit, uh, in there better. It'll suck the solder in and then the solder is right there on your lead, which makes attaching it to the, to the ends a little better because then you're not applying solder to the end. You just stick that uh, into the jack and remelt the solder real quick and it sucks right in there. So we'll do that next. Just like that. Now that we got our leads tinned, which we can, you know, see right there, they're all tinned. Now we got to uh, get these things soldered into the little cups here. Because we have them tinned ahead of time, all we have to do is press it into the cup, hit it with a soldering iron until you see it's liquid, then uh, take the iron off and it should melt and stick in place. Um, we do this by uh, picking each of either the uh, the HD15 or the D15 connector, depending on whatever, and uh, back here following the uh, pinout that that uh, matches the machine, being very, very careful, especially on the Apple II GS end, that we are avoiding these pins up here, pins 7 and 8. Those have live voltage on them, and your... Uh, the Gonbez board, the VGA, uh, the VGA monitor, they don't like that voltage being on there, so we need to avoid those. So read your pin out carefully, be sure of what you're doing before you get these, uh, get these going on there, and then you just uh, melt it in there. So let's do that. Um, before I do that, uh, something to note that um, the uh, the uh, Ethernet cable here has uh, the cables are color coded via the Ethernet color coding. Uh, it has red or I'm sorry, green, blue, orange, and brown wires. Uh, the wires I like to use this are blue for the blue signals, green for the green signals. I like to use orange for the red signals because it's the closest on the color tree, and then the brown is what I use for the sync signal. So we'll go ahead and uh, get these soldered in there. I uh, neglected to mention that one of these little uh, wires in here you don't need. You're only using seven of the lines. So this extra one that's sitting here, you can actually just clip that off to get it out of your way. I've also found that sometimes if you... Uh just tin the leads that they won't stick in the connectors very well so in that case if you can't get it to stick with just tin the leads put a little dab of solder in the cup then press the lead into the cup and remelt the whole thing and sometimes that does a little bit better all right there we go we got both ends soldered on there's the vga end that goes into the uh, converter board and uh, right over there is the end that goes into the Apple II GS. And so you'd think next, the next step would be, hey, let's go ahead and put it in those, uh, go ahead and put it in the, uh, the, project, uh, the project shields there. But you know what? You don't do that. Uh, you know, smart makers, what you do is you're going to test that before you do all the pretty work, work of putting that all together. Because Murphy's Law will attack you full force. And, you know, you put those, uh, put those in there you'll find that you shorted something out and that didn't work. So uh, we're going to test it before we put it in the shields there and uh, see what it does. So I've got that all hooked up. So let's go ahead and uh, flip the switch here of the Apple II GS, turn it on and see if we get some video. Look at that. That looks like it's working. Now that we've confirmed that that works and our video signal is good, now we can go ahead and put it in the little project shields. 
and here you can see where we are we're getting this all put together and put in the hood uh, before you screw to this together uh, very important to make sure that you have put the little strain relief uh, clamp on there this guy fits inside this little uh, the little plastic uh, uh, plastic cavity there and uh, presses on both sides of that so that if you pull on the cable if you pull this way on the cable uh, this is going to stop this part from being yanked out because it's going to hit the edge there and, and it and it uh, and it keeps that from going out. So very important to make sure you get that in there before you uh, screw that all together. And there we go, our completed cable. There's the uh, Apple II GS end, and there's the end that goes uh, onto the converter board. That is pretty awesome. Well, isn't that a really nifty trick? I really like it. It's a great way to preserve your Apple II GS. It's better than going out and finding, you know, an old RGB monitor of unknown reliability and age that uh, might fail at any time. And uh, the extra upside is that with this trick, um, you can connect it up to any VGA monitor and you don't have to modify your Apple II GS in any way. So that's really good. Um, some of the downsides, there's some cost involved, obviously. You got to buy some bits and pieces and parts and there's some shipping and all that. Um, but it's not too expensive on the grand scale and tends to be actually a little bit cheaper than some of the uh, RGB monitors you can find on the internet. Um, you have to have some soldering skills and some of the tools to do that. That can be a downside as well. And if you're not into that kind of thing, then you might not want to do that. Um, the scalar board, the Gonbass scalar boards, because they're doing a, you know, a, a uh, they're doing a, uh, a format conversion. They're not perfect, and uh, sometimes you get to fiddle with all the settings on it to get it to look the way you want it on your specific monitor. Um, and uh, finally, the the, the Gonbez uh, board here doesn't really have any sort of enclosure that comes with it. So you're either uh, you know doing a little maker project to make your own enclosure. You can 3D print one. Um, or something like that, but uh, yeah, it just kind of hangs or hangs out there as a bare board. Some people might not like that. Overall, though, I think it's a pretty good solution. You know, uh, it allows you to connect it to any VGA monitor. The things are a dime a dozen. You can find them anywhere. If you got them in your collection already, great. It allows you to do that and allows you to make sure that no matter what, you're going to have full high, uh, you know, high resolution quality video uh, capable from your uh, Apple II GS. Um, if you're interested in doing this solution, go ahead and check out my website. I'll put a link down there somewhere um, that uh, has a list of parts and pieces you're going to need, step-by-step -step instructions, and it also has that, uh, that pinout that will help you make sure you got all, all, the, uh, all the wires connected in the right spots. Well, that's all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, leave me a comment, or subscribe. And remember, 8 bits is all you need. This is Page Edit. It's a text editor written in AppleSoft by Dr. Bruce Howard. It was originally published in the February 1985 edition of Nibble Magazine. By any standard, Page Editor is very simple, but for an underprivileged kid toying around with his most prized possession, an Apple TV that had seen better days in this life. In this specific supply, it's got four screws. It's got one here, 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 and the other one is all the way hidden back underneath the, uh, the inductor there. Um, and we have to get those screws out uh, first to uh, get this apart. So let's do that next.